Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and today I want to talk about some of the books that I've read since the beginning of August. I've been doing really well with my reading, uh, we went away for the first week of August or sort of the mid of the first week of August for seven days and I read quite a lot of books and I've talked about those in my what I read on holiday vlog um, but today I just want to talk about uh, the books that I read before I went and some that I've read since I've been back there is a complete mixture here there is a DNF um, and it's a strange DNF so um, hold on for that one the first book I want to talk about is very kindly sent by the publisher for an honest review um, and that is Scars Like Wings by Erin Stewart and this comes out in October I really I really liked this book for its message. Um, Ava is 16 and she is the sole survivor in a fire that killed both her parents and her cousin. So she's now living with her cousin's um, mum and dad, so her aunt and uncle, um, who obviously have lost their child, their only child. Um, and uh, she is not only dealing with the grief of that and obviously her aunt and uncle dealing with their grief um, but also she is covered in burns. So this book is um, really good actually at looking at um, physically how she needs to look after her body, the things she has to do in terms of rehabilitation. Um, it's not like getting a little burn on your finger. Um, she has all sorts of things she has to do. She has problems with all sorts of parts of her body um, from skin grafts. Um, she She's had toes put on her hand um, and all sorts of things that she's dealing with both physically um, but also there's the mental side the mental side that um, you've changed your appearance has changed how you feel about yourself because of that how others feel about you because of that um, how others might treat you because of that and how that then impacts your mental health as well um, and I think this explores that really um, in quite an interesting way she starts a new school she's um, her her aunts are her to go back to school she's been off for over a year um obviously with all the sorts of um things that she's been having done um, and her aunt asks her to go back to school and give it a go for a week um, and so she does and um things aren't great but she ends up meeting someone at a support group who goes to her school who is also in rehabilitation for um after suffering from an accident and they form a really um interesting friendship and her friend is really outgoing and knows people in the school there's obviously some issues going on there which you find out later in the book which i don't want to spoil but i think that the strongest thing that I liked about this was that it didn't belittle these characters feelings by um ending the story with oh now you've found friends then um everything's all better and you know everything's all better now and you've got nothing to worry about because you've got friends it doesn't sort of belittle those feelings and make them go away by just um you know think slight things changing in your life which I thought was really good I thought this was a really um good look at um you know how hard it must be in that situation and also dealing with ignorant people people who um, feel that they can talk to you in certain ways or talk to you as if you're not there or look at you in certain ways um, because you're different so I, I really enjoyed this one and I ended up giving it four stars. The next book I read was uh, What Magic Is This by Holly Bourne and this is a novella I picked up at Yelk um, and I desperately wanted to read it straight away. I believe it's, um, it's published by a company called Barrington Stoke and I believe that this is written and uh, pu sorry published and printed in such a way Way that it's more accessible for people with dyslexia um, so I think that's right correct me if I'm wrong um, but this is a novella and it's a story of three friends they're gathering together they all want something or there's something that they desire and they're dabbling in a little bit of witchcraft like in the um, the film The Craft if you've watched that it's a, an iconic film and they're dabbling in calling together um, the different elements and casting some spells to get what they want um, and through this they learn all about themselves they learn more about friendship they learn more about what they want from life and it's a really really good um, it's a quick read but it's so good and I love the ending of this I just thought it was really really clever and really good so I gave this one four stars the next book I picked up was a graphic novel and it's calling dr. Laura a graphic memoir by Nicole Georges and I liked this one but it wasn't as great as I was hoping I mean this is the story of um, of her life where she's found out that she's not actually um, the daughter of who she thought her father that she thought was her father wasn't actually her father um, and um, yeah this she, she talks about her sexuality in there she's a lesbian she talks about that 
um, and about her home life and it really is just sort of talking about her life and the different things she's gone through. I think the problem I had with this was there's no real arcs no cohesion it flits all around the place um, and it was just quite jumbled and could do with um, reorganizing and reshuffling I think and then it would um, it would work a bit better so um, I was unfortunately a bit disappointed the artwork's okay it's black and white um, and I quite liked the way that it was drawn it just lacked that sort of cohesion and sort of focus for me um, so I ended up giving it three stars so next I want to talk about this DNF I picked up Rue and this is a short book and it's told in um, little vignettes so often um, you know chapters are like less than a page long and the writing in this is beautiful it's really beautiful writing and that was the bit that I find very difficult to give up um, but I just to begin with I thought it was okay we were sort of skipping and we're f sort of following train of thoughts and memories and we're skipping through lots of different things um, and it's the story of um, the Vietnamese um, boatmen who came over to um, Canada to Quebec and it, it, it's these boat people that came over um, to escape and became refugees and it's it's talking about Kim's own life um, and it's sort of mirror I think there's bits of fiction and bits of fact in there I'm not 100% sure I thought it was fact but I wasn't sure if it was completely fact or whether it was fiction um, and it skips quite a bit and it's these sort of train of thought and this sort of dreamlike quality and to the begin with I was sort of keeping up and I was really enjoying the way it was told uh, and as I say the writing is beautiful and really she manages to um, create these pictures in your mind in such a small amount of writing um, but then I just started to get lost and it got a bit confusing and I started to lose my train of thought and, and, and my enjoyment of it and so I'm having to put it down um, yeah I don't know maybe if it had been on audio maybe if I'd listened to it on audio it would have been different but um, I'm gonna have to put this one down so a DNF I'm afraid very briefly I'm not going to talk too much about these because um, they're the second and third in a trilogy um, but I read The White Rose and The Black Key which are the second and third in Amy Ewing's series which starts with The Jewel. Um, I ended up really enjoying um, this trilogy. The first book I gave four stars, the second three and the fourth four and um, I really enjoyed it. It's the story, it's sort of um, set in this world where you've got um, everything set up in rings that go into this central area which is called the Jewel Well, the royalty live and as you go out people get poorer and poorer and do different jobs um, the jewels are unable to um, produce their own children and so they rely on these surrogates which are girls who are tested from the outer rings to see if they have these special abilities and whether they can um, have children we're following our main character, Violet, who is taken as a surrogate. She's been trained as a surrogate. She gets taken to her royal family that she's picked for. Um, and then we start to unravel the mysteries and um, darker side of things of what's going on. Um, and it goes from there. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. It was a really um, fast paced and fun series. And I don't know why I've waited so long to pick it up. So I definitely recommend that as a trilogy if you want something sort of fun and fast and interesting yeah it's good um and then the last thing i want to talk about is um a book i picked up i didn't really well, i wasn't going to pick this up i wasn't sure if it would be for me whether it would be a waste of money considering how short um it takes you to read them um, but everywhere i see people are just loving this and so i picked it up it was the tea dragon society by kate o'neill and oh i'm so pleased i picked it up it's so beautiful and such a lovely idea it's um it's a graphic novel and it's a story um, and it does have a story and then at the end um, it actually goes into um, more like telling you the history of as if these things were sort of real. I oh, love that beautiful picture. Um, but it talks about um, this profession of raising these tea dragons and each of these different dragons um, is a different sort of herbal tea so you've got um, ginseng and you've got ginger and, it, and with the little ginger one it's got little horns and when it's all mature you can just scrape a bit of its horn off and that's what gives you the ginger taste in your tea and um, you look after them and you cultivate these sort of growth of leaves and flowers on their horns or on their head and that's what you eventually trim a little bit off of to make your 
herbal tea and these herbal teas have these sort of magical um, memories uh, imbued in them and oh my god it was just so cute and um, yes oh it was it was such I'm so pleased I got it it's one that's definitely going to go on my shelf and that I'll be um, perusing in future and um, such beautiful artwork which I really loved and some LGBT um, references in here we've got um, a gay couple and I think the budding romance of a lesbian couple so um, I just thought that was really lovely as well and yeah it's a really beautiful book so uh, I definitely recommend this one anyway uh, that's it from me I'm actually off to Worldcon tomorrow um, in Dublin I'm meeting up with all the other SFF uh, booktubers um, it's been a while since I've read loads of SFF but I'm starting to get into it and I think Worldcon will um, will push me back into it with full force. Um, Worldcon is a convention where there's loads of talks and panels on and discussion on all things SFF, not just books. Um, but I'm going to be going with a lovely Tracy from Flamingo Reads and there is loads of booktubers out there. Um, Thomas from SFF 180, Elizabeth from Books and Pieces, Caitlin from Kitty G, uh, Rachel from Kalinardi, um, Joe from Final Blow Joe, um, Brie from Brie Larson. I mean, there's so many people gonna be out there. Um, in fact they're already out there now and I'm super jealous but I can't go till tomorrow so me and Tracy from Flamingo Reads are flying out tomorrow and going till Sunday and um, I'll be taking you along with me so um, watch this space for my vlog of Wellcon uh, but those are the books I've read sort of interspersed between my holiday and um, I'm gonna go and get packing now so I'll see you soon bye for now big tube